Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio Live. This is Alex Lindsay, and I am, of course, here with Steve Martin. That's him. It's <laughs> me. <laughs> Mark Spencer. Tim. And uh, we're back. We've got you guys back in the studio. We recorded. We <sighs> just Amazing. finished recording. Or you guys just finished. I, I spent a lot of time just running around. But you guys spent uh, a good time recording some new uh, Mac Break Studios. Yep. Um, weekly show. You, see, you guys seem pretty excited about them. We are. We've got a lot of good new stuff. Coming out, good new material, good new trainings. Now there's a new update to, it seems like we're here, another month has passed, another month or two has passed, and it's time for a new update. The last, to, uh, time, we were, the last time we were here, we had the update 10.0.1 was released, and we are doing this the day, the day, the day after. after. I wonder if Apple is paying attention to our schedule. I'd like <laughs> to think so. That, that, that's, that's, uh, that, that's my story, is that Apple goes, you know, let's just release it right before, because these guys say good things. Not as big an update this time, 10.0.2. What is it? Uh, bug fixes. What, what did it fix? I don't know. Um, I know fixed. a bug that I hope it fixed. It, it fixed one thing. The, the, top of the, the top of the list was when you, I guess you create a font and pick a title, then it would re reset to the default reset font. The font. Yeah. A I, lot of resets. That, so there, I, 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 yeah. one thing I noticed in some of the audio filters mm -hmm. is that you would set them and tweak them. Uh, and then you would turn them off to see what it was, you know, before and after. You just kind of flick it off and you'd come back to it and it, was, it had been reset. reset. You were just... Yeah. Took a, that took a lot of the fun out of, uh, <laughs> out of some of the equalizer functions. <laughs> fun uh, out of anything. To, to, I, I didn't find it very amusing. That's no. all I got to say. It, was, it no. didn't turn out to be as, what I expected. Yeah, and even when you, once you tweak it, you can't really save it as a preset just in case that happens. No, no. It's, no. Just, no, yeah. it's just not there You anymore. just got to start over again. Yeah. So. so you haven't had a chance to try to see if it, it was fixed in the update. I mean, that was just yesterday, right? So you probably... I have not tried it yet. I, just, I was working I on it. I haven't downloaded it either. Nope. We were working on fixing some... Too uh, soon. Some syncing some uh, audio together uh, yesterday, and it was, I was just digging into that, trying to mm -hmm. trying to make that work. But I have to admit, you know, so most of our production, almost all of our production now, is in Final Cut 10. And <laughs> like you were saying earlier, it's just it's just a joy to work with in terms of speed. You it's can just, so fast. I mean, if you, if you watch our uh, upcoming Mac breaks, that's one of the, that's one of the things that you'll take away is uh, how fast you can work, particularly with. Um, this product, that, with this thing that we're working on right now, this uh, Napa Vineyard shoot that we did a few week, weeks ago, we have all this footage to go through, and it's just being able to collate it, organize it, tag it, throw it in the timeline, sync it, it's just, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, try, thinking about doing Final Cut 7, I, I'd rather hit my head against a brick wall. I, I, I have to admit that after you get used to it, the big, the big thing I, had, I, f I found that I had to do with Final Cut 10 is to give up the way I used to edit. You know, and but once you st once you start thinking that way, right? You go, oh, so like a multicam edit, like we're doing these multicam edits with three green screen angles sure. and everything else, and you know, you just figure, okay, so I'm going to do this this section. I'm going to comp it. I'm going to make it a compound clip. I'm going to fiddle, you know, figure out my comping, and I'm going to run some edits, and then I'm going to put the other pieces on top, and I'm going to run some of that stuff, and then it just really was not the issue that I thought it would be. I find that syncing cameras just with the audio yeah. is much much faster right. because the redraw on the on the uh, audio uh, files is so much better. Yeah, it just pops up. You can up. just really see. You can ver very clearly see, you know, the patterns when yeah, you're starting to when you're starting to find and, them. All. And, and we were just doing today this Contessa footage that uh, the interviews that actually your guy shot, where we had two different cameras mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then separate audio. Right. Um, and in Final Cut 10, just you just select those three clips, the audio clip and the two different angles, say synchronize, mm -hmm. and it's done. Yeah, in fact. And it's, it's all together. Here is a synchronized clip right here. Oh, here's yeah. one right here. Here's one right here. Go ahead and bring a, Make those a little smaller, yeah. Little smaller. There we go. But you can see how easily, there, there's two cameras. You have an A and a B camera. They don't look synced, though. That's what they are? Well, it's interesting because. Because the waveforms don't look similar at all. Well, they don't. Oh, but you can well, see. Well, there's, there's, the there's a lot of other noise. There's a lot of noise in right. some You can see the slate at the beginning. Yeah. And it did that automatically? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's interesting is, is yeah, we're going to play, and then it's... Scene two, take one. Which is another reason why you always want to shoot sticks, because you, know, yeah. you want to verify. So if I select this, because it's got the priority visual, because yeah, the top, I select that and I press V to disable it, and then you, there's the B camera right there, and it's completely in sync with the, uh, the A camera at any point. And you've already actually done a little multicam edit here. By yeah, I did that. What I did was I chopped a couple of sections out and I just disabled those pieces. So right. we got. So basically, you just got a. Rutherford is a subappellation of the Napa Valley appellation. So different areas have different characteristics. The wine comes out in a different way. So this is a very particular area. 
Uh, probably top. Yeah, it's just sweet. You just yeah. cut out the pieces and disable them. And these are all shot on five Ds. Five Ds. Yeah. On, you know, right. just uh, you know, windy with all kind. We had we had sirens. Oh, so much and, noise. And, yeah, we uh, thought we're in this we're in this beautiful winery out in the hills, and you can't see any highway. We're away from everything. But then when you actually stop and listen, yeah, it was nonstop airplanes and motorcycles and sirens and everything on over on Silverado Trail. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But it worked great. The mic really isolated that stuff. Yeah, no, it, it, it worked well. And, and when you're there, a lot of times you're shooting with these, these big headphones that pick up everything. Yeah. So you're, you're worried about a lot more than ends up in the, actual, uh, in the actual piece. Now, by the way, if you're watching this right now live, if you're watching it on YouTube later, um, this is not going to help you. Don't, don't go down this path. But <laughs> if you're watching it live, remember that, that we have a, a feedback loop here. So you can actually go up to the, um, there's, a, there's a button to click on one side of here or, not, or the other, where you can ask questions. So you can post questions, um, you can, you can, and then you can vote those questions up and down. Uh, if you uh, have things that you'd like us to discuss, um, it's 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 on this side. So it's right right it's right behind you, Steve. What? It's right. <laughs> it's right right over here. That's where the that the thing to click on. The thing to click on is right right right, right there right there. So um, so anyway, so uh, so if you if you have any questions, post them. I've got them right here, right in front of me, in my little iPad here. So um, I'm happy to uh, to answer those for you. So or they'll answer them. I'll ask them. Yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, how this goes. So, uh, so anyway, so the um, uh, so definitely definitely uh, jump in there. Now, another thing that we, someone was just talking about is that the new computers that are shipping right now. This is not really related to to studio, but it is an interesting thing that I think we need to pay attention to. Is that the new uh, new Mac Pros, new MacBook Pros are not shipping with iDVD or or iWeb? Is that correct? That's I have, haven't confirmed that, but I've, I've heard that. So I don't know. I'll have to. Be at the Apple store tomorrow night. And As Apple quietly yeah, progresses the, the process. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what Steve thought of the whole DVD thing. It's, yeah, it's dead. He didn't, he didn't like it. And now, do we think that... Now, and DVD Studio Pro is still something that's around with the old version. Are they, they're still selling Final Cut 7, right? They're selling Final Cut Studio. You have to buy it through the education channel, and you have to use a 1-800 like number. Like the phone, the phone, and, and, yeah. and it's just and like you have to hop twice sideways, <laughs> and, yeah. and you have to hold your nose and, and go like this. Exist, yeah, an existing inventory kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But right. yeah, you can you can use it. You I haven't made to. a DVD in like I don't know two years. Two years? Yeah, I, don't know. I made a DVD in like 2002, <laughs> <laughs> and and I thought to myself when I finished it. This is a horrible experience. I don't think I ever want to do this again. I, I will pay someone to do that. Uh, I will not do it for myself. That was pretty much the end of my DVD experience. It was one. In fact, it was right after a class that you taught. Was it? Yeah, it was like, it was like a, you know, I was like, oh, I'm all excited. I can make a DVD. And then I made it. And I was like, oh, this is a pain in the butt. So um, yeah. I think that was the problem, right? Yeah. I think it sounds like they're just pushing the envelope once again, where it's like there's a lot of people that are still making DVDs. They're like, look, I've got to be able to make DVDs. But they're saying this is just, you know, a few years from that's not going to be the way. And the iWeb, make, that makes total sense to me just because of the iCloud thing. Right. Like they've dropped off all these things, which unfortunately I use. I have a site with iWeb, and I use iDisk, and I use um, the, uh, the mobile me galleries, the photo galleries, all those things that are disappearing. I need to find solutions for by... June. Early, early 2012, June, June 2012, June. right, yeah. right. So I'm pushing it off for now, but it's like, <laughs> ah, I'm I'm being dragged, kicking and screaming right. into the future. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't quite done, go down that path. So I, I started with iWeb, and I, I made a couple little things for the family, and I just felt like it was too like it was good for doing a couple things for my family, but right. then I kind of decided that I'd rather use Squarespace or right. yeah. or you know something like that to, to kind of put it together. So so hope, as long as Squarespace stays around. Yeah. So Squares, my main site is Squarespace. So I'm I'm right. I actually took that on your advice a couple years ago, and that's been a very solid thing. And this and this uh, episode of MacBreak Studio is not sponsored by Squarespace, but it would be a great <laughs> idea for them to sponsor it because we all love it. <laughs> now, are you using Squarespace? I created a Squarespace website for my church, and, mm -hmm. and it was easy. It was all modular. Yeah. You could just pick a theme, just organize it, right. drop in pictures. It, now, what do you use for your site? What do you use for Ripple Training? Uh, I actually had it, hand, it was pretty much hand-coded. Is that still working? It still works, yeah. Well, you just revamped <laughs> uh, the whole well, thing. It's, it's, doesn't that scare you? I know this is now Mac Break web. It's a thing, but... You know, the thing about websites is like, I, I'm very much interested in the front end, the design, the look, the user experience. You don't care and how it works. I don't, yeah, I just, on the back end, oh, great. You got a bunch of PHP programmers. Right. Make it happen. Just make it work the way it's supposed to work. And well, and I think that this is from a video, I think a lot of video designers are this way now. And I think that that's where a lot of them are trying to figure out how, how do we produce this content and where do we put it. I think yep. most companies that we're doing production for now just want to put it on YouTube. 
You know, so they're gonna they're gonna put it on YouTube yep. and then they're gonna and embed, they're embed it, it. You know, into yeah. their into their site. I Nobody actually wants YouTube to do that. right in the corner. That right. I hate that. Always, you have to have that bug down there. I guess that's a yeah. cost of having free, free bandwidth, right? And it could be a big deal, you know, yeah. to have that that free bandwidth there. Yeah, when you, you you're paying yourself and you get some somebody out there tweets or whatever, and you got a flood of traffic coming your way, you got a suddenly you got a huge bill. Yeah. Um, that can that can put you under. Well, and I think that a lot of folks that that, that uh, we talk to, uh, one of the big reasons that they do it is because it also means that there's better discovery. Yes. So one of the things that they're using when they put their videos up on YouTube um, more than anybody else, but there's also Vimeo, there's uh, uh, you know Blip, there's you know a lot of other great ones, sure. and a lot of them each have their own ways of doing discovery um, that are very you know we've been looking at doing some of the stuff with MacBook Studio on Blip, as mm -hmm. well as YouTube, mm -hmm. as well as other things. And um, they, you know, they, they have their own channels that they've gotten good at or, or using something like Mediafly to put applications on the Roku right. or, or, or so on and so forth. But I think that from a video perspective, I think it's really important. I think that the, um, uh, a lot of the um, Final Cut really feels like it's, it's, if you're making that kind of content, the new Final Cut 10 is really great. And, and you know it's what? I, so I, I finally tuned Compressor, and I'm going to be, um, people are going to make fun of me because... Yeah, so I, um, <laughs> for a long time, I just, I have a Mac Pro with seven, or 17 cores, no, 16 cores, you know, 16, you know, or threads or whatever. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was putting it into compressor, and, I, and it was, you know, hitting, you know. Peaking on, 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 on all did, of them? Did no, you, no, no, did you I was, set I was up getting, a cluster? I was getting, no, no, I, so, so what happened was, it was like, that wasn't that much faster than my laptop. You know, okay. it was kind of like, You're I was like, like what's eh, going on? It's yeah. fine, it's not that fast than my laptop. And then I was, uh, I, I, um, I was reading somebody's post, I think it was, Either Brian Gary's or one of yours yeah. or whatever, and I was like, oh, "I want to try this whole cluster thing." You know, you know, and uh -huh. I and I, um, I think it was his. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's I, the, I did. I did on a MacBook Studio. How do you actually use all the cores in your machine? So probably as when, separate service nodes. Well, so and what I did is I I set it up for eight. It's usually right. half the amount of RAM is what you want to use. <laughs> so, so I have a, there. There is a bug that may occur there, and I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure where it's occurring yet. Right. I'm trying to find it. But, um, and it may be when you're running Wirecast, a lot of times we do these on the road because we have to turn these over really fast mm -hmm. after we've done a stream. But the, uh, we have a RAID, so that makes it a little different. We have a 300 meg RAID that we put all the files on that we want to compress. Mm -hmm. And then- 300 megs? 300 meg a second RAID. Wow. Oh, well, it's just okay. three standard drives. Wow. Um, uh, three standard, like, two terabyte drives straight. Zero. Right. Okay. You know, so you get a six, six gig, or six terabyte, or three terabyte, I don't know what it is, but it's, but it's very fast. But the, um, so we put, I, I set up eight, and, uh, and I ran it, and it just flatlined them across the top. I mean, they were just going for about five minutes. And then I got yeah. this gray screen, went, mm. uh, <laughs> it was like, was, like, panic, was, like, yeah. like it was like, it was not happening. You know, it was like, it was like, it was and, too and much. my theory was, is it was a combination of, of pushing all the processes to the max, and then actually giving it as saturating the bus, yeah. because the drives were capable of saturating the bus. Right. My theory was that that was it. So I lowered it to four, and uh, and then it was fun. Like it was, you know, it you was. Just gotta get to warm fast. them up. I mean, it's like they've been walking, and all yeah. of a sudden you made them do a marathon <laughs> exactly. with no warm up so whatsoever. I, I, and I've done it twice now in a row where I've, where <laughs> I've done this, this kernel panic, you know. And um, uh, but you did notice a speed increase. Well, so when I went down to four, it was so. It, what I was usually calculating is one to one. If it's fifteen minute piece, fifteen minutes out. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting a little better than three times. That's good. So a little better than one yeah. third of the time of the actual clip. To get it out in H.264, this is HD, um, you know, for YouTube, yep. and uh, and it was just uh, I was pretty, pretty impressed. And I mean that when you when you got a situation, it turns an overnight render into this is going to be able to be done and posted tonight before I go to bed. And, I mean that makes a big well, difference, right? Yeah, usually I'm, right. our clients expect us when we're on the road, we'll be on site. They expect it to be up in an hour. You know, yeah, you know that's right. like, you know, how do we get this up in an hour? So uh, so it's been a big it's been a key to the operation. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got a couple questions here coming in on the question engine. Uh, now that you're mostly using Final Cut 10, what do you recommend for full-powered audio editing? Um, are people still using the old Soundtrack Pro, or is there a more up-to-date alternative that is filling that void? Oh, I, I'll mention one particular thing about that, because this week, actually, what I did is, you know, we do a lot of tutorials, mm -hmm. and we record a lot of voiceover, mm -hmm. um, which, and we script everything. We just sort of do it on the wild. You know, we, we write it all out and then record a voiceover. And a lot of people need to do that. They're putting temp voiceover track, whatever. And always use Soundtrack Pro. Mm -hmm. It's fast editing, everything. But um, uh, I decided to try use Final Cut 10. Uh, and it's got to record, just like Final Cut 7 did. So I record it, put it in there. And editing audio was phenomenal. It was so, and, and part of the reason is because of the skimmer, 
Um, you never need to click. Like here, like I said a phrase, I screwed it up, I said it again. I can see the waveform very clearly, and I just skim over <laughs> Command B, Command B, mm -hmm. um, and cut that out. And because of the magnetic timeline, it's always collecting it back down, shrinking right. it back down. And it was so fast and easy to be able to edit audio. So Steve's just bringing up on our chuck right now. Maybe he has Zoom here. just a bit. Yeah, so the, 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 I agree with him 100% is in Soundtrack Pro, you had to make a selection. You have to press delete or shift delete. Now, all you have to do is you can see kind of where your phrases are. You yeah, just put skim, it, put it right somewhere. there, right there. Command, so command B. B. Skim. Command, command B. B. Skim. No, just let's or, delete yeah. that one yeah. thing. Yeah, then you just select, select that, gone. Mm -hmm. It's really and, fluid. You know, and it's not massively different than Soundtrack Pro, but it's about, it's, it's, it's a, a little bit easier and faster. I find navigating it easier. The only thing that I don't like is when that playhead gets to the right, end, let me let it play here. I don't know what it's in playing. Space. In the emitter inspector, blah, blah, blah. change the shape. Okay. The playhead goes off the screen. It doesn't auto. Yeah. It doesn't. You know, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't, auto doesn't on my center, and yeah. it will do that in Soundtrack Pro. But honestly, I don't need to go to Soundtrack Pro. I'm working in Final Cut. That's where I want to stay, and I can do all this editing here. I can select a range and drop the volume down. Right. Um, I can compound clip the whole thing and apply a filter to it. I mean, it's it's really fast and easy for basic yeah, uh, just, auto editing. Just press R, press R and drag across here. Like that. To set a range. That, yeah, maybe that, yeah, set a range, and then maybe that's a little high. You can just kind of just drop drop that section down. That's actually right. faster than Soundtrack. Right. Um, in terms of uh, targeting a specific area or selection. That's, that's and I have to admit, I haven't really done a lot of the uh, editing in, I mean, we've done, we've been doing some uh, trying to get, uh, trying to connect a voiceover that's been cut in later with something mm -hmm. else and sure. matching those and mm -hmm. everything else. And I, I have found, like, is there a good way to loop it? So I have an area that I'm working on, and I want to loop from two, thi two different things. Mm -hmm. I guess that you could do that with auditioning. Well, are you saying just you want to play over the cut point? Or well, what so we what, what we were doing is I had a, we had something we shot in this studio, and then we had to go to the client's um, office and shoot it. Mm -hmm. And I chose not to use the same mic because their office studio had a lot of uh, sound right. around it. I was like, I'm not taking a shotgun mic in there. I'll hear everything in the office. I'll hear the toilet and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so I just took in a, a, a nice... A, 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 um, uh, PR40, which is going to make a, it's going to be a nice, but it's going to be, it's war much warmer. So I had to kind of match these two together, and so I'm using the EQ to kind of try to pull that all back together, and uh, you know, pull the two mics closer together as far as how they sound. Did right. you use, did you try using the EQ match feature? I tried to use the EQ match, and it didn't, it seemed like it did a lot of processing, but I didn't know exactly, well how does it, how do you actually have it look at another clip? What is it looking at? Because I selected it and I said match, and then it didn't ask me for anything. It just said, analyze. That's right. That's as, that's as simple as you, you, you just match. That's all right? it does. There's, that's all it does, okay. yeah. So you were using it properly. I used it, and then I and then I did more on top of it. It, it got me close, but not. it didn't right. get me there. Right. Well, just uh, for audience clarification, um, what we're talking about here is let's, you, let's say you had, uh, let me split this clip. Let's say that clip, maybe that clip was from one mic and that was from another, because mm -hmm. that's, you know, to match it, right? So you would normally do that from, uh, let's see. Right. Yeah, there it is. Match, match, match audio. audio. So you would, uh, you know, select it, and then you would, you know, pick the clip that you want to match. Choose a, oh, see, says, it didn't do that when you I didn't did get it from that. The, no, when I did it from the upper up in the clip, it didn't ask me for another clip to to pay attention to. Choose uh, a clip that has the it audio. Didn't, I you didn't have to that. Match. <laughs> it didn't have that interface. It just <laughs> did something. I, you know what happened? It didn't. It didn't show me this. Huh. No wonder That's, you were confused. So when you click on it, what happens? Yeah, you just. You just select it, and then just like it's just pretty much like the color match. And then you, know, well, and then and you then, click apply match. Apply yeah, match. it is very much like a like a color now, match. it didn't show me that. So well, here's the other thing. Since we're match. since we're talking about this, right? This is, I mean, this was this was in Soundtrack Pro mm -hmm. this feature. But it's interesting. It's not going to work on all audio. It really mm -hmm. is going to work on. Let's say you're working. You're in the same environment. You've got right. a boom mic and a lab mic, and there's just a slight different uh, tonal characteristics. That's where it's really meant to shine. It's not. Right. It's not going to. It's, if, you're, if you're going to match two voices in one, two different environments, yeah, it's not. Yeah. You're not. Gonna, it's not designed for that. Right. But it's designed for exactly what he was doing with two yes, different exactly. mics in the same environment. It, that's right. what it's for. No, it wasn't in the same wonder, environment too. It was in yeah. another oh, okay. environment. So it, it was a pretty challenging thing, and we we warned them that it wasn't going to be exactly the same. It was like you know, if you don't want to come back here, it's not going to work yeah. out. Yeah. You know, but but it, 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 it we got it, we, we definitely got it closer. But what I really wanted to do is be able to very quickly. Um, so yeah. you you did it from up here, yeah, and then I hit position match. match, and you had well that these are your different choices, but, but then you hit was hit, not um, was grayed out. Choose was grayed out. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, 
Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, if you do it the way I just showed you, it'll I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm ready. Just to use, I, that little, so it has to, use a little pop-up menu with I a have wand. To admit, it the has wand to analyze. Always, it's analyzing right now before it allows you to, to do the maybe, match. Maybe I, was, maybe I just never maybe, got to that part. Yeah. Because I, um, maybe I thought that it, when I was saying analyze, maybe I thought that that's it. That's uh, it that it was actually analyzing to match. Here's yeah. just analyzing before you can <laughs> choose getting, a clip to match to. Like, just getting started. It was like celery and carrots is just the base of a soup. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's my favorite. That's my, one of my favorite lines from movies. It's from Gross Point Blank. Anyway, uh -huh. so um, more questions. ABC HD 24P in port um, in Final Cut 10. Is any easier? Older older FCP. Uh, uh, used to have an import at 29 FPS, then use compressor to pull it down, which was a pain. This is from Greg Kane. Does that make any sense? Is it any easier to bring in AVC HD 24P than it was before? I have I don't have any issues with 24P uh, footage I brought into Final Cut. In fact, lot, in fact, I have to. I've been editing more and more with just the raw H.264 yeah, files right right off of the camera at 23.9. Are, are you having it optimized? No, I'm not even on my iMac. I'm not even optimizing it. It's playing back dro without dropping frames, mm. without any issues. Right. I only optimize. I'm now coming to a place where I only optimize when I'm on a slower machine with a slower graphics card. Right. And, and I'm really happy with the, especially short form. I'm not talking about cutting a feature, but I'm saying cutting, you know, the kind of stuff we're doing here with these, you know, talking heads well, and, and cutaways. There's a sweet spot, you know, because uh, people are constantly asking me now. So, what, what what should I use now? Now that Final Cut 10's out and it's. Mm -hmm. You know, like where should I go? You know, and because a lot of people, are, and I, you know, my my opinion, and you guys can tell me what you think. My opinion is, if I'm, if I've got a lot of transcripts, if I've got a lot of, and or I have to integrate with a lot of other applications like Photoshop, right. After Effects, so on and so forth. I I think Premiere is the best solution. I think all the solutions are good now. Um, I think Premiere is a great solution because I I got to tell you, I've done a couple experiments with taking. So you, you do a whole bunch of interviews. And then you transcribe them all, and then you use Premiere's tools to reintegrate that text with the, and you can edit by just selecting text. Select text. You, yeah, you, you yeah, can right. get it. You can get. I mean, that, that is right. That's cool. That's compelling. That's, that's really. Good. That's, that's all I got to say. Right. It's, right. It's, 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 it's got it's got its points, especially right. when you're doing documentaries, when you're right. doing big corporate videos, when yeah. you're doing a lot of those things. We have a lot of clients who will, um, you know, we'll do all these interviews, and they send us back just the text. Yeah. We want this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And then we, right. our job is to clean it up and make it look good, but that's what they want it to say. Right. And Premiere is a much better solution yes. in, that, in, that, in that realm than any, any of the other options. Um, if I was going to do a feature, I'd still do it in that. But, I mean, I, you know, I just, I don't think either Premiere or Final Cut scale. You know, I don't think the old Final Cut scaled either. I get that Walter Murch did it. I just don't think it would. Just because you know, just because you can pull a trailer with a Chevette doesn't mean you should. Yeah. You know, and and um, you know, and and uh, it's not good for the engine. It's not good for anyone's health. You know, I think that the Final Cut doesn't never. I would never put more than ten thousand objects into a single Final Cut project. I mean, personally, yeah. and um, but I, I, what I will say is, when you look at the web stuff, I think I think that for fast web, yep. ENG news, uh, educational pieces, um, you know, things that you know need to get turned over with. People who are more crea more creative than technical, um, mm -hmm. and also need to move fast, you know, and get this stuff done. I just, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, yeah. you know, like well, like for Final Cut Ten. I think, I, I mean, I think that was their. I mean, would you agree that that, that was kind of I their agree. target market? And I think they hit it. I agree. I, I, you know, for the, for the short form like web videos, marketing videos, government videos, mm -hmm. educational. Vid I mean, all the kind of short form stuff. That's anywhere between you know five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes on the outside. It's just so. Fast. It's yeah. easy to learn. It's yeah. fast and it's deep. You can do. It's not. It's not a toy. I mean, it's got a very full feature set that that, that you can work with. And and honestly, to all these things, like this question about the twenty four MP import, the, the, basically the answer is yes. You can import twenty FP footage. You don't have to go through compressor and not at all and and, and change it. Um, but all of these NLEs have free trials. Final Cut Pro ten is a thirty day free trial. So just download the thing and do it. You know, just just try it out. It, it's easy to download all these, Avid, Premiere, whatever. You can just try all these things out yourself and see. Yeah. But it sounds like you've segmented. You just talked about Avid for features, Premiere for in-depth documentaries with transcription, and or Final things Cut that for web. With Photoshop or in a lot of After After Effects, Photoshop heavy kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then Final Cut where you want to do short form stuff with web delivery. I mean, that's that's kind of a interesting segmentation. I mean, to, but to me, like that's where their their strengths are. Now you may decide you want to push one to use it yeah. for the other things because you're comfortable and you with can. that tool. And you, any one of these tools can do anything. But there's certain things that 
some do better than the others. Because I think a lot of people are trying to make that decision. They're just getting into this. They're just building those things, and they and they need to make a decision. And to me, that's the that's been the kind of thing. Demo reels. What about demo reels? DVD dead for that as well. This is from Vince Bauer. I haven't used a DVD for a demo reel. And yeah, why would you use a DVD? Who's gonna? Anybody who wants your demo reels want to see it on the web? DVD. Yeah, I mean, I I'm sending it to Vimeo. I'm putting it on Vimeo or YouTube or or yeah. you know, if, if it's if it's stuff that's like copywritten, I mean, I'm putting it on. Something that I can make private. Quite private, right. You know. Otherwise, I just point people to the stuff that we've done on the web. Like, right. here's our stuff on YouTube. Here's, the, here's our client's work yeah. that is already on YouTube. And here's just a list of links. Because if I send them anything other than that, I don't know if they're going to be able to open it. Right. They've got to. They make good copy PC. coasters. PC users. Yeah. Oh. PC users are always. Sorry if you're, watching, if, you're, if you're using a PC, but. The bane of my existence when it comes to like <laughs> sending people videos. I mean, you know, just like I can't figure out why. You know, you're just like, okay, it's on YouTube here. You know, exactly. you know, you know, just, right. just have to worry about plugins push or the button. Yeah, 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 just, just yeah. push the button. Yeah. It'll it'll work. Um, so a more synchronized clip tips. This is from Kevin Yank. Uh, I was amazed when Mark Spencer pointed out that you could create synchronized clip from two cameras and a microphone. For some reason, I just assumed a synchronized clip could only ever uh, have one video track. Any other tips uh, for working with synchronized clips? They seem to be a big exception in FCP's media management um, in that they behave like FCP sequences. Well, um, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, if I understand the question, let me go back to the synchronized clip. <clears throat> what happens when you synchronize a clip, which we hadn't really walked through, is you're selecting all of the, the di different pieces. So what you're selecting is that there's your A cam, there's your B camera, and where's the A cam? There's your A camera right there. And uh, let's just qu quickly walk through how they do this. And then I'm going to command click the A, A camera here. And then there was the actual clean audio, which was, uh, um, let's see, where is it? Which, by the way, I uh, would highly suggest for people. There's a lot of people yeah. who who captured other cameras. There it is. Most of your most of your um, your preamps on mm -hmm. your cameras. Are horrible. You know the preamps on a on a Key Pro are worse than the ones on our EX1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the preamps on the EX1 are not listenable, really, in my opinion. I mean, we use them if we have to do like handheld coverage stuff, um, and definitely going through like a little Beach Tech to the to the camera. It's it's fine. It's fine. But when you get a real recorder, um, yeah, you know, it, you get such a clean audio, and now you have this, especially if you're starting and stopping these cameras, mm -hmm. you have this nice big audio clip that you can yeah. sync everything to. So that's what you're doing here. Well, so I was yes. going to say, I selected three. I selected the A camera, the B camera. You can see that. And I selected the actual clean audio on the digital recorder. And then now we just right click, choose synchronize clips. And what happens is it makes a, a, a new kind of clip, and it's called a compound clip. And if you open up that compound clip, it opens up in a timeline. And this is where, this, this is to me, the big paradigm shift. This is an actual timeline. Uh, but this timeline is actually part of the a project. It's not even, been, excuse me, it's part of an event. You haven't even right. added this to a project, right. which means you can actually add effects, titles, you can cut it up like I did earlier, and then add it to a project later. Mm -hmm. So it's right. like this little self-contained timeline. And in some ways, it's like nested sequences. It is. It's kind, it, it's of, kind of like that, except that it's not nested into for your you. browser. Right. Right. Yeah. But uh, you can sync as many. The nice thing about that, I haven't tried this, is since it's using the audio to synchronize everything, mm -hmm. it, the cameras can start and stop based on, you know, you need to do a media change or a camera. It right. doesn't matter. You just throw all that stuff, and it just so happens that these cameras here happen to be the same duration. Mm -hmm. start. You can see that this is a little bit longer, but let's say maybe this camera started here, and then all this stuff wasn't, and all this stuff wasn't here. Um, it, still it would still sync that piece way over here based on the audio. Right. right. In fact, I just um, I was teaching a, a group of journalists in San Francisco mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, a one-day yeah. class on... Um, um, they wanted to title the talk, Fanica Pro 10, what the question mark, explanation point, hashtag, you know, because that's what they were felt about, like what, we don't, we don't get it. So I, I did this class and showed them what you can actually do in Final Cut versus all the kind of noise about it. And at the end, they were like, okay, we're sold. This is, this is what we want to do. You know, with this, we totally get it. And especially what these guys do, they're a chronicle, they're all journalists, but they're all doing video now. Right. right, they're all doing video. So this guy's walking around with an H4n or some, you know, another audio device and doing what you're talking about. The audio's just running and he's shooting a little bit of video as he goes. And he ends up with all these video, separate little video clips in one long audio track. And I showed him this and he was just like, you know, cause he's sitting there doing everything manually. 
Right. Yeah, and then here's the solution. So. And before, what, what, what we were doing before this was using Pluralize, of course. You yes, know, that was the, yes. That was kind of the, the secret sauce of, of, uh, of and this. Pro, and Pluralize was great for what it was. Great it, 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 oh, absolutely, absolutely great. But and now, I still think it's a little bit more accurate. There, we, we find with these, every once in a while, we get little slips here and yes. there. Uh, I think that Pluralize uh, was a little bit more accurate as far as that, that calculation. But, but it's great. Yeah. Works very, very well. Um, Next question here we have uh, from Greg Kane. Any news on GTEC Mini Raids, uh, the HD with Thunderbolt? Do you have any Thunderbolt? Items? I have a Thunderbolt port on my iMac 27. <laughs> 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 don't you want? <laughs> I love my 27. I just I don't have a. I was going to buy one of those Promise Raids, but I'm just kind of waiting. I'm waiting for some of the other. Yeah. I mean, the, so the Sonnet Raids, the the Lassi stuff. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of things I'm really excited yeah. about. And I'm just waiting for them to roll out. I, mm -hmm. I, um, I'm planning to get either the Blackmagic or AJA Thunderbolt STI interface. Yeah. I'm excited about that. No. But we'll see how that goes. Um, rendering window. This is from uh, Alan Morris. Uh, Even for short timelines, background rendering takes a lot of time. Should background rendering be turned off? Um, are you, let's see, are you referring to, go to, oops, preferences. Uh, let's see, is it playback? Um, it's playback. Uh, is it playback? Background oh, rendering no, right there. there. Yeah. Um, so the, I'm not sure I understood the question. <laughs> it said for, even for short term line, uh, short timelines, background rendering takes a lot of time. Should background rendering be turned off? I mean, it's not really affecting you because not, yeah, start it's, after it's, you're not using it for five seconds, right? Yeah. yeah. That, so part of the reason it might take a long time is if you're doing things, there's no background rendering happening. Right. Because if you're playing and editing and stuff, so it might take a long time because it hasn't had an opportunity to do anything. All it does is every time you pause, then it kicks in and does a little thing. So that's number one, right? Is if so, you have to and, leave it alone. And I, and I have a fix for that. What's that? A fix for what? Yeah, what's the, the, what's the, the background rendering issue? It's it's um, French press coffee. Ah. <laughs> okay. I'm just telling you. Okay. It takes a while. Yeah. It takes a while for you to. So like like if you just so, leave your computer. There, there, there's if, no you just, if you just go make your coffee, just really take care of it with a little green. You know. It, it. I see. There's personally, I think there's no reason to turn that off. I mean, what? Take a break. Walk away. It's, it does its thing. Come back and. But, but the other, so the other thing is, it depends what the background rendering is doing, because there's a lot of different things that can be going on depending on like what you selected when you imported your footage. Did you choose to analyze all your footage for, for color balance, for audio problems, for people? Because if you did all that, that's part of what background rendering is doing, right? That, so that's another reason it might take a long time is it's not just rendering your footage to the timeline. Because basically, if you brought your footage in and it's native and it's native in the timeline, you didn't choose to analyze anything, there is no background rendering. Right. It just kicks in if you're adding effects or your footage doesn't match your timeline settings or you've checked some of those analyzed yeah. things. Yeah. And then you're right, you don't really, I actually do turn it off. Yeah. Um, I do, because a lot of times I just don't want it. I know I'm going to be making a lot of changes. Right. I don't want it to render what I've got there. Because yeah. I'm not talking about analyzing sure. the footage. I'm just talking about it's rendering a timeline where I know I'm doing color correction. I know I'm doing titles. I know I'm doing transitions. You know you're like, just going to keep on doing it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to keep doing it. I don't want it to spend cycles rendering stuff that I'm going to re-render anyway. You want it to stay yeah. fresh. That's a good point. Yes. You, you don't yes. want it to be like, oh, I'm so yes. tired. <laughs> and it's not like it's creating extra space. It's not going to fill up with render files. But still, I just like to, I like to turn you it off. You feel bad, don't you? I like to be in control. <laughs> it's a bottom line. You feel exactly. bad. You feel bad like you're working. Oh, you're yeah. Working that, you're no, working don't that do all that. You're yeah, wasting you're just, your time. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, pulling compound clip out of a project. This is from again from Kevin Yank. Uh, let's say I've created a compound clip in my project timeline. Imagine, if you will. All right, we have one of those. And I realize that I'd going. like to share it between projects. Any way to pull that compound clip out of the project into my event library where I can reuse it? Short answer, no, because you have to, the event library and the project library, two separate, separate entities. Uh, right. Never the twain shall meet. They are separate databases. And so you can't, you can drag a compound clip from the event library into the project, but you can't drag a compound clip from a project right. into, to, event into library. the, right. So if you need to get that particular, like right here, this is a compound clip, right? Mm -hmm. If I need to get that into another, I can copy it copy, paste. and paste it into another. I can copy it and then create a new project at the project library and then paste it into it. <laughs> but you couldn't create a project, could you create a project in another event and paste it in? Well, what you could do is in an event, almost, you could create a new compound, you could open the compound clip, mm -hmm. copy its contents, and create a new compound clip in the event browser and copy and then paste that contents in that new compound clip. I mean, if you really wanted it in your event library, right, you can just create a new empty compound clip in your event library. Yeah, you can, in, yeah, actually, you, that's actually a really good point, and I'm running out of screen real estate here. Uh, you can, let me see, let me go here, you can 
right click in this and choose new compound, new compound clip. clip. Look at this. This is actually pretty neat. You create a compound clip. I'm going to just leave it untitled for now. It creates an empty compound clip. When you open it, you can put whatever you want in there. Well, and then, so can you paste what you had in the yeah. other one? Yeah, and then you so, can so go, go back to the, you can just use the history, the left arrow, and, and co now copy the contents of that compound clip. So Command A, Command C. And now and open, open that it. guy. Open that guy. And, and, and Command uh, V. Command V. And then, of course, it wants to know. Just, That's fine. Right. But there, there it is. Okay. So there it is. Yeah. And now, I just, did, just, just to prove it, double click the uh, compound clip that's up in the event library just to see it. Oops, it's I, already open. It's that's already why. Open. There it is. Yeah. So that there you go. That's that's, so that's a way to do it. That's how you do it. Thanks for the question. That was that was good. It pushed us. Pushed us. It so pushed us. Yeah, pushed us. Uh, slow mo. If a client asks for a <laughs> super slow playback for a close uh, review, um, how do you do that with the sound enabled? So um, you. I'm not sure what. Okay. Maybe he wants to slow down the video footage and have the video and the sound not get real. Okay, that's an easy. That's an easy one. Let's go back up here. Um, I'm going to go into. Well, this this footage doesn't lend itself to slow mo too much because it's already pretty slow. Uh, but let's say you wanted to slow down just this clip here. Of course, you can go to the re, that's what's called the retiming menu, and you could choose slow, fast, or what have you. Now, here's the key. You know how? Well, let me back up. So. A second. There's two types of speed changes in Final Cut. There's constant speed changes and variable. Constant means, of course, if you change the speed to 50%, the entire clip will be changed to 50%, not just a portion of it. And so that begs the question, what happens to the audio? Okay. In Final Cut 7, mm -hmm. it would change the pitch. So a slower clip would go, roll, roll, a faster clip would go, roll, roll, roll. okay? <laughs> That would be good at that, right? Really now, good at, you, now, he's heard that before. He now, knows that now stuff. here's the thing. If you scope, where is it? Um, to, there is a setting in here. I used to be in here. There's preserve pitch. Did you see? Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Where, that, that's what I was looking. Where is it's, it? It's, 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 on. it's grayed out. It's on. Down okay, there. well, because yeah. I didn't do anything yet. Yeah. But see, it says preserve pitch. By default, preserve pitch is on, which means it attempts to keep the pitch consistent. Uh, regardless of what speed change you use. Mm -hmm. And then if you uncheck preserve pitch, then it'll go back to Final Cut Pro 7 mentality, which is... <laughs> so. And you can only push that uh, so far, right? right? I mean, because he's saying super slow-mo. I mean, after a while, yeah, it starts while, to break apart. It does. So, that's... There you have it. Yeah. There you go. If you have other questions, let us know. We have gone through all the questions that we have here. Wow. Um, you know, there's been there's been a lot of good questions here. It's pushing us along. Um, but uh, anything else that's, that that have you guys have, have run into in, in Final Cut that has been either like, oh, this is great, or oh, this is not so great lately? Um, no just aha moments? A lot of, lot of little moments. glitchy things that are a lot of anno and little annoying things we both yeah. discover. I mean, to me, there's stuff, and it's not so much Final Cut, but with, with motion, because I do a lot more work mm -hmm. in motion, and just motion is now... Um, 32-bit uh, all the time, or 64-bit all the time. But it used to it used to work. You could choose 8, 16, or 32 for the bit depth for your project, and that's gone because it works in float space all the time, which is nice. But the downside is is that it has lower performance. Right. It's better performance than Motion 4 if you set Motion 4 to 16-bit, <laughs> but nobody did. Right. So as a result, like I'm just I'm creating this new tutorial on particles and doing this cool stuff with particles and it's 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 slow and it's painful um, it, I, you know I love the new interface are you on an iMac or are you on a Mac I'm Pro? on a Mac Pro with a good card yeah I'm on a Mac Pro and, that, and that's frustrating because we're this far along in the development of software and the cards have gotten better but we're still not really getting the performance that I'd really like to see and I, and I think that this is I, I do think that this is a problem for Apple is that I, I we're, we're never getting the kind of performance out of the NVIDIA cards specifically that, that, we, that you get on the PC side. On the PC side, right. Man, when you're, when, you're, when you're working with something like, on a 3D side, when you're working with something like Cinema 4D or Moto, or you have it on both mm -hmm. you know, Mac and PC, you really feel it's it. the difference. You, know, like you just suddenly feel this, just this incredible speed um, out of, um, uh, on, you know, on, on the PC side, mm -hmm. as far as the 3D performance. Mm -hmm. And you get on the Mac and it's just like, no, not really. And, um, and a lot of that has to do with that. Apple insisting on writing its own drivers for the NVIDIA card. Mm. And, and that just turns out to be a real yeah. kind of a bummer. Thing, yeah, you know? and the ATR, ATI cards for motion have always been the better cards to use. I don't, the, right. the performance just Which better. is interesting because ATI generally from a developer's perspective is not the better mm -hmm. card. <clears throat> I remember when ATI used to be built into the Macs before Steve got mad at them. 
What did he get mad at them for? Uh, because they, I think they let the cat down the bag or something that, you know, he, they kind of tipped their hand to something he was doing and that didn't make him happy. He doesn't like that. He, he didn't Oh like my that. gosh, does he not like that? <laughs> oh, didn't like that, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With a capital. But, oh my gosh, even if, yeah. So that's why we have NVIDIA as the right. cards, not yeah. ATI. He, he pretty much blacklisted them. Right. Um, Don't piss off Steve. Another question here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> once I'm finished working with an event whose original media was H.264, it's very tempting to delete the ProRes footage in the transcoded media folder and just keep the original media folder. Any downsides? That transcoded media is being referenced in your project. Yeah, correct. So your your project will poof. It'll turn. I mean, no, it won't poof. It'll just uh, turn it, red. It'll it, turn it, blood. Yeah, blood I mean, red. go offline. It'll yeah. go offline. Yeah, if you don't. I mean, you could delete the media that you never used, maybe. One thing you could do is, if you just wanted to use, delete everything else, you can make a copy of that project and say to copy the media mm -hmm. to a new location, and then you could delete all the media, uh, and you'd only keep the media that is being used in the project. Mm -hmm. The only downside, because just to this today, actually, because when we wanted to move media on to do our shows today, I didn't want to bring up, I wanted to put it all on a USB stick. I didn't feel like bringing my computer up. The thing is, when you take your project and, and duplicate it and duplicate just events referenced by the project, it takes the full clip. So mm -hmm. if you've only used you know, 10 seconds of a three-minute clip, it's taking that whole clip. It won't trim the media for you. And that's something that would be nice to... The upside of that, of course, do. is client revisions. We get a lot of those. It's really nice to have... Have like, the whole thing. I've done a couple, yeah. a couple of things where I've cut things down, like, yeah. oh, I'm never going to use this again. I'm just going to put it all together. And then... Can you put the part in where he said this? And you're like, like oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I can't <laughs> yeah. really do that. Anyways, yeah, so the, um, that's, the, uh, that's the upside of it. Yeah. So I, I, wouldn't delete that, I wouldn't delete that media if you, uh, if you want your project. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, if you, don't, if you don't care about your project, <laughs> delete away. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, uh, any other big, I don't know if there's any other big news. That was it. Now the uh, you know hopefully from a from a studio perspective I'm really hoping to see sounds like we've been we've seen the the, the delays in the Mac Pro and we're still hoping to see one more rev. I just read an article and you know I, <clears throat> I use this app called Zeit which pulls mm -hmm. in all of the app, you know and there's an article about Tim Cook saying it's like he's you know a lot more friendly with enterprise solutions than Steve was so it seems like there might there might be a kind of door for creating more enterprise type things. It, I don't I. I, I I'll be honest, I don't have any expectation of seeing any more Mac Pros except for maybe one more. To me, there is finishing the line. You have, you know, you have everything else on Thunderbolt. Just give me one computer with Thunderbolt built in, and then we're done. And I know that I probably will never, I'll never, you know, I'll buy a Mac Pro, and I know that I'll never see another one. And I'll, you know, like, this is it. This is the last ones we're going to get. I don't expect to see Apple going down that path any further, but I do want, if anyone at Apple's watching, you were you were begging last time. You were <laughs> <laughs> one more Mac Pro. Well, I have I, we have all these Mac Pros here, and we use them a lot. And they're you know they're starting to get long in the tooth. We've had them for a couple years now, and mm -hmm. and and but you don't you know, and they still are faster. You know, they still are more scalable. They and still are expandable. Uh, an yeah. iMac is great. We have lots of those too. Right. It's not the same. Right. So you you know, put the card that you want in, and, and lots right. and lots of memory. And maybe people say, well, what about an expansion slot with Thunderbolt? Yeah, sure, when they appear. Right. You know, we, right. we, we can have that not, conversation. But right now, they're not here. So, <laughs> when uh, they appear. Um, more questions here. Audio leveling. Any suggestions on leveling? And this is from Jace Broda. Uh, audio and Final Cut 10, rather than having to do it manually. Is there any plugins for that? Well, there's a there's normalization filter mm -hmm. that will go through and normalize all your audio, right? right? I mean, that's the first thing I would do is yeah, where is that normalization filter? Uh, I think it's under, I think there's two options. I think one thing I would go to the inspector and just see under the audio options. Well, there's you can your, select uh, that audio clip. Well, yeah, it's okay. But uh, there's all your audio. Okay. See, there, you, there's the equalization, but there's, now you don't want to do EQ. I would think um, it would be under levels, you know. Um, but you really want something that's... Uh, Remember in Final Cut 7, it had the uh, normalization gain? Right. right. There is no normalization gain uh, effect that I found in here. 
Um, could, what about I gain? Does gain normal... What is what happens when if you if you apply gain to it? Does it does it have like an auto function? You gotta go they here. Bring, you can bring up the, the whole uh, interface. Man, there's or just bring up the whole interface, so you can see. No. No, I. Okay, I, I, I was sure there was a, just an, a regular normalized no, that you I can run think, on the whole I clip. I don't think really? there is, yeah. Okay, well that's... So that was, what, that's the heart of his question, is like, yeah. I want to be able to drop a filter on it and be able to set the actual peak, is what I think he's asking. In other words, I want to... Because the, well, the, the way normalization looks, it's looking at the peaks and right. saying, you're, you're, you're choosing the peak and bringing everything, everything up, up to, to that, that level, right. which prevents distortion. You know, right. which, So, I don't... This so is that's I, a multi-presser. This is what I use. <laughs> That's how I. This is how I normalize things. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful interface. But what you have is it's a. It's a. Um, so this is a both uh, compressor mm -hmm. and a gain and um, expand. So what it says is that if in these cases, uh, and, and you, what you have are you have your different bands mm -hmm. here. So um, now these are you can do overall gain changes here, mm -hmm. but you can do it specifically to different. Part, different frequencies, right? Um, which is really great because you want to bring someone's voice up, but you don't want to bring the room noise up or you know down or whatever. You don't want you might might want to compress something, but you don't want it to be boomy. It looks like you can adjust you can adjust the frequency bands also. Yes, yeah, so you can decide right. where 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 you the frequ those, where right. those yeah. frequency bands are, um, and so that you know that's useful. So you know you can get into kind of this. I don't like to go up to ten. I like to go into a little bit like this because this is going to make it more intelligible. Right here, because so that's where a little over yeah. 500 human, up to 5K. human voices yeah. fall like 500 to like. Right. You can do a similar now, you can, thing you with have a fatty in someone's right. voice, but but you know this. But and what this will do then is then you can take this compression, and I can start start saying I want to compress this. You know, let's say two to one. You know, two to one. Maybe I don't want to compress this down. You know, this stuff here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I can mm -hmm. decide how how quickly is it going to jump in. You know, how how quickly is it. You know, what am I looking at? That would here? be the attack. Attack is how quickly, how fast mm -hmm. will I release it? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then, and this threshold is negative twenty. So anything above negative twenty, I'm going to compress two to one. Yeah, that's anything, when that's when it kicks in. It kicks in, in at, at negative twenty. Below negative twenty, which is going to be in your noise floor, is where you want to leave it alone. And you may decide I want it to be negative fifteen. Now the problem is, if you make that too high, it starts to pump. If yeah. people are sitting, if if our conversation is sitting on either side of twenty. And people are going in there. What happens is some stuff is really loud and some stuff is really quiet. You know, and so, yeah. so you have to find well, how do I get underneath everyone that's in there? And then the, on the other side of that, you have the expand um, threshold, which is down in the noise floor. When that happens, I want to reduce it. I want to push that the, the other direction. So expanding mm -hmm. is going to push that all the way down. But the, the, the fact that you can do it in lots of different frequencies is, you know, Useful. A lot of control. And then here's auto gain here. And what? so then it'll find, it'll try to keep everything, you know, auto gained here. But it's a, I got into using this in soundtrack. Oh yeah. Um, and it's the same and you'll, see, you'll see what your output levels are here. So when you actually run it, you'll actually see what those output levels are. You'll see if you're peaking too much and so on and so forth. Um, usually when the compression is set really high, you know, you start setting a compressor, you know, at anything over about five or six. And you're really now talking about a limiter. <laughs> you know, like a limiter is just a compressor with a with a heavy hammer. You know, you know, it's, it's a cut off. Yeah, I mean, you're just gonna say you're not you're not going up there. You know, and uh, but it's it's a it's a useful way. And what I like about it is is that it you know you can what that's gonna do a lot of times when you have a lot of different microphones is it's gonna pull everybody together. You know, so you know you've got a couple different voices that are mm -hmm. different volumes, and you use a compressor across the entire thing, and it just kind of. Pulls everybody together, pushes the sound away, but that's what. Anyway, and one thing I've noticed about all these plugins, these you know, we're in Logic, went from mm -hmm. Logic to Soundtrack Pro, and went from Soundtrack Pro to Final Cut Pro 10. One thing that is missing from these here is all the presets. Like, um, if you use Sound Designer, you know, there's there yeah. are all these presets to be able to choose. Hey, I want to make this sound like it's in a hallway or in a concert hall or something. Which and, I found uh, pretty hard to use. You know, the but they were good starting points. Spaces. Could, I, I um. You know, I got in here space yeah, designer. Yeah, space designer. Yeah, which is a pretty crazy interface. It's like, yeah. whoa. But there used to be in Soundtrack Pro at the bottom right, there were all these presets you could pop open and choose from. Right. I so I think that's for the extra content under the space designer um, presets. I think you get what are they? What do they call them? I didn't drawing a blank, but uh, <laughs> I never use this. Basically, it's uh, space designers are pretty crazy. Yeah. Some really crazy stuff. 
So but I, I, I often use those presets as a starting point. There was like a telephone preset, so you can make somebody right. sound like they're talking you know, to a telephone. I think that they have a telephone. I think, I think they do. They do. They've There's included like <laughs> their own <laughs> little things in here. Just to make it look like telephone. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, short look. You can do car radio. There's a telephone. There telephone. It is. Yep. You just throw Extortion. it on there. From now yeah. on, he he dialed it in. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So they they put it. They did that way. They stripped them out of the yeah. big plugin and and put them up front in right. the categories. Um. Robert Bale says, hi, I just used the compressor. Uh, it has a limiter that you can set to negative dB, and it works well. So All right. That's, the, that's another, same, same type of thing we were talking about, but, but even simpler. The compressor yeah. by itself is even simpler. Uh, deleting transcoded media again. Uh, he said, in my testing, if you delete the transcoded media from the event in Finder, the projects uh, that reference those clips go back to using the untranscoded media footage, just as they did before you transcoded the video. So they're automatically switching back to the H.264 or whatever. <coughs> That's really interesting. No, the event's the event. What's, hap what's, what's probably happening in, is that um, the project is looking for... Remember, the files that are in the transcoded media folder and the files that are in the original media folder are identical in terms of metadata, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, naming. I mean, essentially, they're, they're the same. So why wouldn't... You would think if you delete it, it would just like repoint to that media mm -hmm. file with that metadata. So mm -hmm. it... it that, that's fine if that's what you want, but often in that project, the whole reason you transcoded to ProRes was to have ProRes in your project. And, and now you're saying, oh, I just want to delete all that, and now you're just going to have your... I, I just, I, you know, that's a really good point. I, I guess I don't understand the point of, yeah. of why you would do that. I mean, look... Maybe just to make space, and you could always say in the future, if I wanted it back, I could transcode it again. Well, I, you know. let, let's say you're, start, you're starting with H26, excuse me, H, DSLR H264 meter. Right. I can understand the need to transcode it for mm -hmm. performance-wise, okay? Mm -hmm. Although I'd argue on the right machine, you wouldn't I mean, you even to do that. I a size issue. I don't yeah. want a bunch of ProRes Space. stuff. But, yeah. but, but the H.264 is editing so well now, it's kind of like if, you're not, if you don't want the Apple ProRes. Well, again, the, the question for me is why did it get transcoded to ProRes in the first place? Right. If you're going to end up back at, Pro, uh, at ProRes back to originally, I don't, I don't understand. Well... I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, p performance is one reason. Or if you're doing a lot of effects and color grading, you might want to work on ProRes Media. Mm -hmm. So let's say for any of those reasons, you transfer, you, you, you um, boy, I'm getting tired too. Um, transcode to ProRes, uh -huh. and you work in a ProRes timeline, you're finished your project, right. and um, you don't care if it goes back to H.264 because you've got a, this ProRes footage takes it's four times the space, right. right? So you could delete all that like he did. It's repointing automatically H.264, and basically you can archive, and in the future, if he has to go back, he could always transcode again, right? Cause, and that way he's saving 4x the, the space in the meantime. So I right. could see that. I'm, I'm yeah, just sort of like... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sold. And so I, no, I, I mean, see, I'm, not, I'm I, yeah, I guess, I you, guess you just see no reason to transcode whatsoever. Well, I again, it, uh, maybe it's not I, on a machine I, I, I that can see, play it back. Well, that, if you're not on a machine, you can play it back. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. and a the, laptop. I mean, it has H.264 on a laptop is a little, a little rough on Final Cut Pro. Uh, agreed. I'm, I'm not saying that's not to be transcoded in all circumstances, mm -hmm. but um, again, on the on the right machine, the graphics card, you know, and, it's, and depending on the nature of the product, you right. could. Use original, or you said turn it into ProRes. You do get better performance, absolutely. But if you're on a laptop and you it's full hard drive, and you want to get you run with the project, you know, go for mm -hmm. it, delete it, rock and roll, and you get it back later. <laughs> he's not sold. No, he's, like, he's not. Like it's your, you know, yeah. Uh, any big news on third-party plugins or complementary plugins for Final Cut 10 workflow? Um, you mean? Well, there's, a, there's a ton of plugins yeah. out there that are Final Cut, and there's more every day. Uh, Genaris has said they're going to have a Sapphire plugin set for Final Cut But did you read, I mean, I've been reading that, uh, um, what's his name, the uh, DB Rebel guy, um, Stu Mashwitz. Stu, yeah. he, he came up with a whole, on his, on his I think it's called ProLost, his mm -hmm. blog. Mm -hmm. He specifically said, you know, Apple hasn't yet opened up the API completely for creating plugins, and what's happening is this plugins like creating is is, is it's wrap, you know it's putting a motion wrapper around them essentially, and so that gives you essentially three choices in for interface. You've got you know a pop up, you know a checkbox, and a and a, a and a slider. That's yeah. it. Well, what if you needed to create something specific? I need to create a Dropbox, so when a little well, drop. Well, it's, ob it's it's obviously possible because uh, I just looked at wait wait where was that? I mean, this is you know this is what's frustrating if anyone's watching from a. Apple is when I go like this 
And then I click up here and I click on that. That is not yeah. a bunch of sliders and checkboxes. Well, that, that's, that's, that was Stu, Stu's yeah. point. Yeah. Until Apple opens it up, so other, the, the types of plumbing, the type, we should be able do to do that. Well, right. You're right, absolutely. That, that's a, I completely agree. We, the, Stu's company should be able to make something right. like that, which is right. why their, their plugins, their red giant, really cool stuff, you're, you're yeah. not going to see mm -hmm. in the kind of in the native way they're designed to work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, another this is good, gorgeous. It'd be great to be yeah. able to open this stuff up in more. M Flare is another good example. M Flare is a, a motion VFX that kind of makes this product M Flare, which mm -hmm. is a really cool thing for adding flares to your projects. Mm -hmm. Like really nice flares, animate the flares, do the layers in 3D. But it's it's kind of a kludgy implementation because it has to be this separate app. You have to then go through motion and publish from motion to Final Cut. And you have to go through like three separate applications to get your flare into Final Cut Pro 10. Right. Because you can't you can't do this. Right. Yeah. So it, it's it, 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 yeah, that has to change absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, uh, Ripple training updated for Final Cut ten point oh point one. Have, uh, if you haven't done recently, should uh, should the should you plug the fact that Ripple training tutorials are being updated alongside Final Cut ten? Well, we are very pleased. We, we, with this. Oh, is he saying? Kevin. Is he's he saying, saying he's that saying he's saying thumbs up that it's being updated? Yeah. Right? Should, should, should we let people right. know? Oh well. Yes. Maybe we, we should do it we again. We, yeah. yeah. Maybe, all, maybe on a show that we're doing here on YouTube, yeah. we should. Uh, well, here's here's, here's a line. Here's, we should tell people that. Here's the thing. I, I've decided when I make we, Mark and I release a free plugin every week, and we we tweet about it, and we tweeted about the 10.0.1 tutorial update back on October 10th. And it sounds like we need to retweet it more because a lot people of people, people, people don't know. People don't know because you're getting, yeah, people don't know. So you updated, you, anybody who bought your tutorial gets a free update to the 10.0.1 right. features. And you, but you tweeted that information, they can yeah. go download it. Right, in fact, yeah. if you do it, it's, it's at Ripple Training and then you go to the October 10th feed, the October 10th post, that's yeah. where the link is. So it sounds like- At Ripple I, Training. Yeah, yeah at Ripple Training. So it seems like I need to do another tweet about it. Yep. Very good. I think we have brought this one to the end. We're going to stop while they're still asking for more. <laughs> Great. What, you're talking somewhere tomorrow? Oh, yes. Uh, I, uh, Claudia Crass runs the uh, SF Cutters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she invited me up and uh, to present at the Apple Store. And I'm going to Which be Apple store? the one in Stockton, right there, the one you downtown, always used to print uh, downtown. The I'm going to I'm gonna, gonna have, gonna have to brave the Market Street yeah, campers. Yes. And, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Are they all right? There? They're the it's, right. It's been yeah, extending, it's, right? It's watch out. They are it, the 99%. They're the yeah. yeah let's not go there. But yeah, no, no. It's, it's from they, they're they're camping out from San, uh, from the bank, no, the federal building, all the way to Embarcadero. Wow. So. Wow, they're getting. So anyway, and you know what? You know, because of course that Apple store is literally right there. I mean, stock that's like ten, you know, ten feet away, and there's there's Market Street. So, I'll be up there. There's gonna. Like, sorry for the digression there, but there's just gonna be I think, I think between sixty, seventy seats left yeah. uh, are, are available, I should say, and it's free. People can come. I'm doing a whole presentation on. On, again, making these web videos, how fast you can work, syncing. Well, and, and the other thing to remember is, if you're going to the, if you want to come to the Apple Store from anywhere in the, the Bay Area, the great thing is, is that the the, the Powell Street exit on Bart is right, right below there. it. <laughs> so you know, so right. just go right yeah, down. Don't worry about, right? don't worry about go driving. Right down, don't right. worry about figuring it out. There's just, uh, you can just, Powell Street, you can just there. get off on the Powell Street and just and just pop right up there. And it's one of the reasons our office used to be right there. Well, I literally well, it was nice. There was a Bart. There was a Bart substation entrance, like right there by your. Yeah. Right, you just walked out and just go right it down. It wasn't by accident. It was. <laughs> you know, when we were looking, we were we had a bunch of different places we were looking and that we were offered. And uh, and the key was, is I lived in outside in Berkeley, mm. and I was like, I want to be able to walk. I want to be able to get out of my out of the Bart and walk into my be office. There. Yeah. You know so. So, yeah, so that's so why you pick What time tomorrow morning. night? Uh, starts at 6.30. And, uh, Get there gonna... at 6. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. My goal is to, to in, in one hour, cut, the, you know, cut an entire promo with music, with titles, yep. color grading. And I think that will sell it Final Cut more than anything, just how fast you can work. Yeah. You know? It's turning out to be, I, you know, I think it just took a little people. It's so funny there. So, so many people who are talking about it not working are people who have read all the articles. They've, so, they've seen the cone in. Uh, short. They've seen the, you know, you know, they've right. seen all these right. things, and they go, "Oh, is it, doesn't it? You can't really edit on that, can you?" And you're like, "Have you? Have you tried?" Because yeah. well, you know, even you've seen the Walter Murch interview at Boston. Walter Murch obviously is this venerated guy who's mm -hmm. cut all this. He he even admits, "I've never used it. I haven't tried it. I haven't used it." So there's there's two things about Walter Murch. One is he's cutting 
at a level that most people are. not I mean, he's right. doing things that I'd say the nine, you know, ninety percent of people aren't even doing. And then second of all, he hasn't even used it. But he did have good things to say about it, which is obviously Apple's committed to the long term. This is where things are going. He he sees a lot of positives, but you know, he, admittedly, he's never used it. Right. So, you know. Which is a challenge for Apple. Yeah. Although he, he, he mentioned, it was interesting, the interviews I was watching was he mentioned the position tool. So he, he knew something about it. It was like, oh, you know, because he was talking about the magnetic timeline yeah. and things that he was finding difficult. Yeah. So it sounds like he had, he's been shown it and stuff, but he was like, oh, but you can use this position tool. It's like, oh, Walter, all right. <laughs> <laughs> position tool. Where can people find you? Where can they find me? On the web. RippleTraining.com. RippleTraining.com. And we're coming up, Mark and I have been working feverishly on some advanced yeah. tutorial, some motion and some, I'm doing a tutorial that's like focuses on cutting, when to cut uh, a scene from a movie, when to cut a promo, when to cut uh, a commercial. And the idea is using all these tools to show you how you can use Final Cut Pro to, to create some pretty rocking stuff. That's great. Yeah. And, and, uh, and AppleMotion.net is my uh, motion dedicated site. And I got a tutorial coming out that'll be on Ripple's site. On, and again, uh, motion particles. is like, $50. It is yeah. like the secret weapon of throwing uh, this stuff together. $50. $50. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a great application. Anyway, that's all I want to say. All right. And that's the place to do it. Yeah, um, yeah and, and so uh, uh, just a reminder that uh, we are actually taking our live events. Uh, we'll be off for two weeks. So um, normally we would have one um, next week, but it's, you know, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then there is, um, we have a uh, crazy set of streams that, you know, for clients uh, that are coming up. Um, so December may actually be a very, very slow month for, <laughs> for our live stream. We may actually be, be, be calming down a little bit. Just, yeah. So we're going to, we'll, we'll let you know. Follow PickScore on, on, um, uh, on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Follow these guys on Twitter. But we'll let you know when the, ne the next live one is. But we are probably going to take a quiet time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, and it's actually, it's not because we're out buying gifts. It's um, because we have, uh, the, December turns out will be the busiest month of our company's history. So, so. Um, That's a good problem. And so, have. a lot of the gear that we used for this. Uh, will be out. Will be here. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, I actually start, start this uh, crazy thing as soon as we finish this. Um, uh, getting on a plane and flying to Akron, Ohio. Ac it's a Akron. Akron. That's home of Firestone Tires. Really? There you go. Oh, we got one more question. Uh -huh. I'm working with uh, video footage of live workshops where I have a separate video of the speaker and the speaker's slides. I'd like to build some reusable rigs that would let me animate transitions to and from picture and picture, side by side views of the slides and the speaker in Final Cut. Is this possible with motion? Um, I have to think about it a little bit. Basically, yes, using drop zones. Right. You can use drop zones uh, to put the different content in and publish those drop zones. And then in Final Cut Pro, you can put content in those and you can animate those drop zones and have them do whatever you want to do. So the, the fundamental answer is yes. There might be some tricks in the implementation in terms of clip length and where clip starts and that sort of thing, but drop zones are the way to do it. Very cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for watching our Mac Break Studio Live. And uh, we, I think we're probably going to end up coming back in December and having, having, uh, having them. So this will probably be the one that we do. Uh, then so um, so definitely uh, check that out and uh, we will see you then and uh, thanks so much